Hello, welcome back to Summit Tutoring. I'm David Austin, and today we will be discussing linear equations and linear inequalities. So here's our first example of a linear equation. It says, in the equation shown above, a is a constant, and it asks us, which of the following values of a results in an equation with exactly one solution? And our answer choices are 4, negative 4, neither, or both. So based on the linear equation that we're already given, the equation will have exactly one solution if a is any number other than negative 4. So if a is equal to negative 4, the linear equation will have no solutions. So in this case, the answer choice is going to be 4. So if we plug 4 into this linear equation here, That gives us one answer of negative 5 eighths. So in this case, the correct answer will be 4, our answer choice A. So here's our second example. It's very similar to the first one in that it tells us that A is a constant and it wants us to find which of the following values of A results in an equation with exactly one solution. We have four answer choices. We have 9, 8, neither of them, or both of them. So the first thing I'm going to do to start solving this problem is rewrite using the distributive property and then I'll combine my like terms. So using the linear function that I already have, I'm going to start by distributing. Then I'm going to combine my like terms. if a is any number other than negative 9. So if a is equal to negative 9, there will be no solutions, which is not what this problem wants. But now we can look at our answer choices. So the answer choices of a equals 8 and a equals 9 will both work. So if we plug in 8 first, we get one answer. And when we plug in 9, we also get only one solution. So that gives us the answer of D, or both, because both 8 and 9 work in this problem. So here's our third example. The first thing to think about is that there will be no solutions if the n terms on the left cancel with the n terms on the right. So that would produce a false statement such as 1 equals 0, which we know is not true. So this will only happen in this problem if 4 is equal to 3k. And then if you isolate for k, we get k equals 4 thirds. So then the n terms will cancel, and that leaves us with 4 times 80 is equal to 0. So this right here is a false statement. So that tells us that k equals 4 thirds is our answer. There are no solutions to this linear equation if k is equal to 4 thirds. In our fourth example here, we're told that a is a constant, and it wants us to find what following values of a results in an equation with exactly one solution. So we're given negative 2, 2, neither, or both. So first, let's rewrite this equation using the distributive property and then combining like terms. Based on this statement here, the equation will have exactly one solution if a is any other number than 2. So when a is equal to 2, there are no solutions. So the only correct answer choice here is negative 2. If we want to plug in to double check, we can. And we're left with one solution of x equals negative 5 halves. 
So if a equals negative 2, the equation will have exactly one solution. In this fifth example, we're given a linear inequality. So it asks us which of the following best describes the solutions to the inequality shown above. So the first thing you want to do here is isolate the absolute value on the left hand side. So we're going to bring over the 27 and then we're going to combine our like terms. Then we're going to continue to isolate and we're going to divide by 4. And then now we can rewrite this as two separate inequalities. We can rewrite this as 6 plus 2s is less than or equal to 6, as well as 6 plus 2s is greater than or equal to negative 6. And this is because of the absolute value signs that are used on the left side. So first, let's work on the first inequality that we created, which is 6 plus 2s is less than or equal to 6. So the first thing I'm going to do is get my right side to equal 0. So I'm going to subtract 6 on both sides. So that just leaves me with 2s is less than or equal to 0. I'm going to isolate my s. So that leaves me with s is less than or equal to. So my second inequality is 6 plus 2s is greater than or equal to negative 6. So the first thing I'm going to do is bring over the 6 from the left side of the inequality. So that gives me 2s is greater than or equal to negative 12. Then I'm going to isolate my s here by dividing it by 2 on both sides. And that leaves me with s is greater than or equal to negative 6. So then when we look at our answer choices over here, the only answer choice that supports both of the answers that we just found is answer choice B. And that is negative 6 is less than or equal to S and S is less than or equal to 0. So in this example of a linear inequality, we're given a linear inequality as well as an expression. So if you look closely at this problem, you'll be able to figure out that negative 4x minus 6 is equal to negative 2 and 2x plus 3. So if this is true, then we can figure out the possible range of values of negative 4 minus 6 by multiplying all the parts in the inequality by negative 2. So if we set this up, we get 5 is less than 2x plus 3 less than 11, and then we get negative 2 times 5 and negative 2 put 2x plus 3, which is greater than 11 minus negative 2. And then if we multiply those together, we get negative 10 is greater than 4x minus 6, which is greater than negative 22. And then we get negative 22 is less than 4x minus 6 is less than negative 10. And all I did there was flip these two sides to keep it consistent. And then now possible ranges of negative 4x minus 6 is any value that's going to be greater than negative 22 or less than negative 10. So that tells us that the correct answer choice is B. I hope today's review of linear equations and linear inequalities was helpful for preparing for the SAT. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below. Remember to hit the like button and subscribe, and turn on post notifications for our upcoming videos. We will see you in the next video.